get your ears wrapped around the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. All the scoop you need to know from college basketball to the NBA and even March Madness. News of your rising stars. Topics on and off the hardwood. This is the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the GSMC Basketball Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jeff Malinoff. We've got some interesting things happening this weekend in the world of what is called basketball, especially with LeBron. Shocker that LeBron's in the news, right? Well, I talk about him. We'll talk about him in a little bit, but he called out his own team at their little loss to the Rockets on, on, uh, on Saturday. So we'll get on that in a bit. But first, we got to finish up, like, what else happened this week? And then also, is the playoffs already set? Or are there teams still fighting for that spot that are going to get in and maybe surprise some people? We'll get on that as well. We'll also talk about Kobe Bryant again. Yes. He's in the news again, and he won another championship. But it's not the one you think. Or maybe you already know about it, and the one is, you think. So we'll get, we'll get on uh, that later. First things first, LeBron James. Saturday, the Los Angeles Lakers lost to the New Orleans Pelicans. More specifically, the Anthony Davis-less Pelicans. Anthony Davis is not playing this game. And they lost this game 128-115, to 115, a very convincing matter. And LeBron did all he could with his 27-12 and 12 game, 27 points, 12 assists. Brendan Ingram tried to help along with 29 points himself, but it just wasn't enough. Not enough help overall. And now the ultimate question is, with the Lakers now being under 500 still at 28-30, and 30, this is one of the worst, if not the worst, start for Kobe. Almost call him Kobe Bryant. LeBron James' career. They're twenty nine and thirty. They're behind the Kings and Clippers fighting for that eighth seed. And I'm going to add the San Antonio Spurs as well because they are the same record as the Clippers, so that could change at any moment as well. The Utah Jazz in fifth place have the same number of wins as both the Spurs and the Clippers, so you can put them in the same category as well fighting for a playoff spot. The Kings are behind them at 31 wins, so they're two wins back. About, about a game and a half back from the Clippers and Spurs due to the... Or about, about two games, two games. With the Lakers now being 29-30, and 30, the question remains, with about 23 games left in the season, roughly... Is it enough time for LeBron to do LeBron things and be the man? And be LeBron of the past and make the playoffs again? Because if he does not make the playoffs this year, which is very which is a very good chance. Maybe not maybe maybe that's a strong word, not good chance, but just a chance in general. This will be the first time he misses the playoffs since 2004. Now it's his second year in the NBA with a rebuilding Cleveland Cavaliers team. Since then, he's made every single playoffs. Been in the finals eight times in the last eight years. 2011 to to 2018, well, I guess seven years. From 2011 to the previous finals we just had in 2018, he's been in the finals. And, of course, I will go back. 2011, Miami Heat lost to the... Dallas Mavericks, 2012, faced the Oklahoma City Thunder, won that championship. 
faced the Spurs the next year. Went back to back. LeBron did. Then they faced the Spurs again in a rematch. Spurs took that one. That was Kawhi's uh, coming out story and how he became one of the top players in the NBA today. 2015. That was during the Golden State Warriors run for the championship. They beat the Cleveland Cavaliers, him returning to Cleveland. Then 2016. LeBron beats the 73-win Golden State Warriors. Down three games to one. 2017. Kevin Durant decides to join a team that can win a championship because apparently he can't do it on his own. I'm not going to bash him anymore. I'm, he's probably going to... I've done enough of that already. I just don't really respect the guy very much to be this my honest opinion. But what are you going to do? Regardless... He's still one of the best players in the NBA. They got Kevin Durant, top five in the NBA, no question about it. And they convincingly go past Cleveland in five games. They go back to the finals. The Warriors should face LeBron's Cleveland Cavaliers again. They get The Cleveland Cavaliers get swept. So LeBron has won three championships, one of them being back-to-back, the other one being in Cleveland against 73-win Warriors. This... That This last year when they got swept might be the final time we will see LeBron James in his playoff, in his finals streak. His final streak may be, may be over. His playoff run, playoff streak, consecutive playoff appearances may be over. And he had some words about the Lakers. He said they got to be... Comfortable with being uncomfortable. He was saying more along the lines of they're used to losing. They can't be used to that anymore. I'm not used to it. Because he's been very successful, as you know. So, obviously, he called out his own team. And with with all that that has happened... Um... The, with the trade of Anthony Davis and trying to risk all these picks and, or this draft pick and basically selling the whole team for Anthony Davis, putting that team at odds in in theory, that was that was the uh, that was the question marks, uh, basically going into it at the moment was he uh, with the loss or with all this trade stuff happening and with all these doubts through the players' minds that they're expendable. That put a damper on the team itself, and that could be the reason why they're going. They're not doing as well as they should be, or not as motivated as he, as he believes they are. And with that, I say more along the fact that he just LeBron maybe picked the wrong time to really call them out because there are already kind of tension brewing. And with the I'm not going to remember ramifications is a strong word, but just overall, LeBron maybe opened up a can of worms more, more of a can, another can of worms than he already had. He had a he already a let alone one. There, here's the second one. And with that, I say that the Lakers are either going to take this. As a motivation tool, as a motivation tool, or take it as another shot at their at their dignity by LeBron, and be kind of resentful of the guy. I wouldn't blame either way, to be honest with you. And with that, I do say the fact of the matter is LeBron is in a situation he's not comfortable with. He's not used to. And that's outside the playoffs looking in. He's multiple games behind the playoff spot. There's tons of other... He's in the Western Conference for the first time. That's the main key thing to this. He's in the conference... He's in the Western Conference the first time, the tougher conference. He's usually... uh, By this point, he's probably first in the Eastern Conference. Very comfortable in first two. Uh, But with all of the other things happening and with the entering the Western Conference and how everyone else has been playing and playing extremely well. For example, the Kings coming out of the bottom of the Western Conference and moving into a potential playoff spot. 
The Clippers still playing well. The Utah Jazz becoming a main force in the Western Conference. Trailblazers still up there, and so on and so forth. The Lakers have not are not the contenders everyone thought they were. And LeBron, like as soon as LeBron joined the the Los Angeles Lakers on that max contract, everyone thought this team would be immediate contenders, immediate championship contenders, just based on the fact they had LeBron. And I'm not. I was on the same train. I thought with with arguably the best player in the NBA, and arguably the best player of all time. Uh, with that, I do say that LeBron is in trouble with this season. When I say in trouble, I mean not getting in the playoffs. And looking at him not getting into the playoffs is weird, first of all. And he does say playoff mode is activated, but I don't think it'll be enough. I honestly don't think it'll be enough. Because the team around him just, honestly, I I can't believe I'm about to say this, there's a lot of good talent out there, Kuzma, Ingram, Ali and Pabal up there, but I don't think they're ready for this push. I don't think mentally they're prepared. It seems to me that this team might not be looking so good. And I mean not looking good as in the fact of the matter is they're just – this team may have been overrated going into the season. And they've kind of proven the point already. As playoff mode was activated, they won the first game since playoff mode was quote-unquote activated, beating the Rockets. Then they play the weakened Pelicans without Anthony Davis. And now I just I just think more on the, on the lines of just this team just isn't good enough to make the playoffs. I'm calling it right now. I don't think the Lakers are making the playoffs. I really don't. If I see a team taking the eighth seed, may I'm thinking maybe the Clippers, but with the loss of uh, Tobias Harris, they seem to the quote unquote still be pushing because that's what their owner has said. But it seems to me they're looking for max contracts in the future next season with a Kawhi Leonard, for example. I think that's their main goal is to get Kawhi Leonard, and. With that, I say they might edge out the edge out of the playoff spot. They might just barely miss it. The Kings have a good chance of making the playoffs in return. I think they are the best team to or are the best team to make that push for a playoff spot since they do not have a draft pick. They have a top one protected draft pick against uh to the, and then it goes to uh Celtics, if not. So they're they're without a draft pick. Ninety nine point nine nine percent chance they're without a draft pick. And with that, I do see that, bottom line, the the Kings are just the best team available right now to go into the playoffs if they keep winning like this. They just beat the Thunder. They held their own against the Warriors. It just seems like they're going to be the ones. It's a good thing, too, because they're like the Browns of the NBA, so it would be a good Cinderella story, if anything. They'll probably be swept by the first place, uh, first place Warriors, but... Hey, you still got there, right? Enjoy it. But we are going to take a tiny break. When we come back, we'll talk about every game that's happened this weekend in detail. We'll be right back right after this. Are you looking for the very best NFL and college football podcast? Then check out the GSMC Football Podcast. Get the latest football news both on and off the field. From the NFL draft to trades to the rumor mill to the NFL combines. They got you covered. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash football dash podcast. Get updates on college rivalries, game day insights, and much, much more. It's football talk the way you want it. This show eats, sleeps, and breathes football. Don't don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info.
Welcome back to the GSMC Basketball Podcast. Just finished up with LeBron's dilemma in L.A. Now let's move on to the weekend. What happened in the NBA? We'll start with Friday's games. Thunder and Jazz in that double overtime thriller with uh, two players on the Thunder. You can, I guess you know who that is, Russell Westbrook and Paul George, both with over 40 points. 45 for George, 43 for Westbrook, 15 rebounds for Westbrook too, add nine rebounds for George and seven assists and eight assists as well for both of them. No one else on that team went over 20 points. That's how dominant those two were in that game. The bench had a total of 14 points. Noel had two. Nader, Nader had three, and Schroeder had nine. That's incredible. Then you look at the Jazz side. Whole different story. Crowder off the bench with 20 points. Favors had 24. Rubio with 14 himself. Donovan Mitchell, of course, leading the charge with a 38-point game. Excuse me. Rudy Gobert had 26 points himself with that 16-rebound performance. Like Everyone did their job when it came down to this double overtime game for both the Jazz and the Oklahoma City Thunder. It was only one point game for crying out loud. But then George hit that gorgeous floater over Gobert to take the game into uh to take the game and uh seal it for the uh Thunder. So far that's probably one of the best games I've seen this year, to be completely honest with you. That was a very fun game to watch. I had no complaints about it. It was competitive throughout. I mean, double overtime is always super exciting, especially with, like, buzzer beaters and such like that. So, nothing but positives when it comes down to it, when it comes to that game. And, but yeah, that was on Friday. That was a start to the weekend, too. Uh, other notable games that happened was the Spurs and Raptors on Friday. Uh, it was DeMar DeRozan's return to Toronto for the first time since the trade happened with him and Kawhi Leonard. And... For the Raptors, the Raptor fans gave DeRozan a standing ovation as he was being announced by the uh, PA guy for the visiting Spurs. And it was a pretty cool moment. They gave him a standing ovation for a long period of time. It was very emotional. I thought it was. I thought it was a very cool moment for DeMar DeRozan. Uh, There's a little video tribute for him. I'm not sure if it was at the game, but I saw a video tribute on, Insta- on a, I believe it was Instagram, maybe even YouTube or something. I forget where it was. I believe the Raptors made that. I could be completely wrong. I might have been just a fan made, but there was a tribute video. I saw at least. It looked pretty legit. Uh, but what happened was it was the Raptors' night, though. As the final seconds, I believe it was under 20 seconds left, to Martin Rosen lost the ball. Kawhi Leonard stole the ball and dunked it home at the end of the game to steal the victory for the uh, Toronto Raptors. And uh, it was. The Raptors really sealed a 120 to 117. And so with that win, the Raptors still look to be the top of the Eastern Conference. And with this loss, the Spurs are looking and look at a certain tying situation with the Los Angeles Clippers for the seventh and eighth seed. But things only went bad to worse for the Clippers for not the Clippers, excuse me, for the Spurs as on Sunday. We'll fast forward real quick to Sunday. We'll go back later. As a Sunday, the Spurs lost to the Knicks. The Knicks' 18-game home losing streak has officially ended. They won this game in a convincing 130-118 to fashion. And despite DeMar DeRozan's efforts with 32 points, 9 rebounds, 4 assists, it was not enough as the Knicks held on to win this. Dotson had 27, Knox had 19, Thomas had 16, Dennis Smith Jr. had 19. Like, everyone just contributed one way or another. And with this, honestly, I'm not saying there's a good chance. I'm saying there is a legitimate, real possibility that the Spurs don't make the playoffs either. We might see not the Spurs or the Lakers in the NBA playoffs. How weird is that? Well, I think, yeah, that could happen because the Clippers could move up to the 7th seed and the Kings move up to the 8th seed, and that would leave both the Spurs and the Lakers out to dry, which would be like an alternate universe, which I think would be insane, but we'll see how everything turns out. But regardless, the Spurs had a pretty rough weekend overall, losing their two games. One winnable game and one 
they just lost themselves, just how, how it goes. Moving on to Saturday, after the double overtime victory for the Thunder, they go on a, to face Sacramento in Oklahoma City, and they failed to seal it. There was a little uh, uh, floater by Russell Westbrook at the end of the game, but it was a charging call, and uh, Willie Colley Stein took that charge. Russell Westbrook wasn't happy. I don't think the man's ever been happy. He's pretty always, always upset about something, it feels like. And uh, right, the Kings sealed this one. The Kings won this one, 119-116. Really proved that they deserve to be in the talk of potential playoff teams. Buddy Heald having an amazing season with 34 points added to this. Jaron Fox uh, might be a uh, most improved player with a 19-point performance himself. Almost double-double. And but on you look on the Thunder side, Westbrook had another forty one point game. Ten re- so back to back forty point games for Westbrook. But the most surprising thing is the Kings held Paul George to fourteen points. The MVP candidate over Westbrook, in my opinion, only was held to fourteen points while Westbrook had the forty one went off. But regardless, the Kings win this one. They hold on to beat the pretty tired, all things considered, uh Thunder, but again, this is one of those games and where a win is needed no matter what. And as for the Jazz coming off that double overtime loss, they go and beat the Dallas Mavericks one twenty five to one oh nine. And this was out this was without, excuse me, Luka Doncic. So that kinda hurt them in the long run. And uh Nevin- Dirk Nowitzki had fifteen points. Good for him in his uh possible last game. Possible last season. Uh, Donovan Mitchell, 25 points. Ricky Rubio even had 25 points, which is shocking to think about. And overall, just the Jazz got the job done. They came back, and they fought their way to get to where they are. Probably the biggest game of the week end was the Rockets and Golden State Warriors as the James Harden-less Houston Rockets defeated the full healthy a little bit of Jamon Green injury there, but fully healthy nonetheless. Golden State Warriors, 118-112. Chris Paul took over with 20, 23.17 assists, and there was three guys on that starting lineup team for the Rockets with 20 or more points. Paul with 23, Gordon with 25, and Farid with 20. And then you look at the Warriors' side, even with Durant's 29, Curry's 25, and Thompson's 20. It was not enough. Draymond Green had to sprain his ankle in that game. He kind of was injured, and it was kind of a weird situation where he kind of fell in front of head coach Steve Kerr. Steve Kerr didn't know he was there until, like, five seconds in. Five seconds of him lying in front of him holding his ankle. He was looking around, looking around, then looked down and goes, oh, whoa, whoa, what's going on? It was almost like he was completely spaced out. You know, like when you're in school and... It's a lecture you just do not care about, and you just are trying to look and concentrate, but it's early in the morning, so you're trying also not to fall asleep. And then next thing you know, it's like, oh, okay, class is over. And then you're like, wait, I didn't learn anything. But it's all going to be on the exam tomorrow. But what, what exam? You, you say they've had an exam, you know, and then it goes bad or worse. Uh, yeah, I've been there. I think we've all been there where they just you don't pay attention. It feels like two seconds, but it's really been 25 minutes, and you're like, uh-oh, SpaghettiOs. Does anyone remember SpaghettiOs? I still eat them. I like I sometimes like in college. That's what I ate mainly was like canned foods and spaghettios was one of my jams. Not literally, but I did. Enjoy, I still do enjoy spaghettios today with the meatballs, especially. Anyways, moving on after that tough loss for the Warriors, uh, we had the Celtics lose to the Chicago Bulls. A lot of upsets this week. Zach Levine had 42 points against the Celtics with a, within a six rebounds and four assists as well. Kyrie Irving's 37 points was just not enough as they got beat by double digits to the very weak Chicago Bulls. So not only did we see the last play, the worst team in the NBA, arguably the New York Knicks, beat a playoff team in the San Antonio Spurs, but we also saw... The Chicago Bulls, the third worst team in the East, third or fourth worst team in the NBA behind. There's also the Suns. You got to look at the Western Conference, but third worst in the East beat one of the top teams in the East, the Boston Celtics. So that is an interesting circumstance to think about how 
much this game has turned and twists and turns and all this good stuff. Pacers are still holding on to their their top, one of the top seeds in the East as a victory over the Washington Wizards, one nineteen to one twelve. For the uh, Pacers, they just all seem to be playing at a high level. They just seem to be playing together. It seems pretty. Uh, Sp- Spion is still looking for like sixth man of the year with thirteen points and twelve rebounds himself. Everything's looking pretty quite and dandy for the Pacers, even with the loss of Victor Oladipo, their best player. So. Looking into the rest of the games this weekend, we'll just go briefly by them since none of them were really that important. Trailblazers, but I guess this one is kind of Trailblazers defeated the 76ers 131-15, two playoff teams going at it. Um, nothing more to note there than Ben Simmons is 29 points. Uh, Gri- Cavaliers beat the Grizzlies 112-107. Really shows how far the Grizzlies have slumped down since. They were kind of at top of the of the conference at one point earlier in the season, but now, now not so much, not so much. Nets beat the Horton, Hornets one seventeen to one fifteen to keep their spot comfortable in the place for the playoffs. D'Angelo Russell with forty points, really revitalizing his career in in Brooklyn and really showing that he can play with the best of them. Uh, Hawks beat the Suns 112, 120, 112, 120 to 112, excuse me. Uh, nothing really much more to say about this game. It's uh, two of the worst, two of the bottom feeders facing each other, so nothing much really to talk about on that one. Uh, but there's also the Timberwolves and the Bucks. The Bucks beat the Timberwolves 140 to 128, and the Greek freak with another double double up doing his thing for the MVP award. Chris Middleton even had 27, 28 points himself. A lot of good things to happen for the Bucks. As for the Timberwolves, Wiggins continues to not be a number one pick kind of caliber player with 20, only 18 points, but he did get nine rebounds, so he had a pretty solid game, all things considered. Derrick Rose off the bench, 23 points, another shot for six man of the year for him. So I'm not sure if anyone's actually won an MVP award and a Sixth Man of the Year award, but, I mean, he can do it. He has it, well, not in the same year, of course, but he can do it right now. He can do the Sixth Man of the Year. He did the MVP in 2010. People want to forget that, but his legs getting into and all that stuff is still being remembered. And so with that, those are the main games. I think I missed one. Oh, yeah, the Pistons beat the Heat, 119-96. Two bottom feeders, nothing to... Uh, dramatic that happened in that one so that is the games that happened this weekend but we are going to take a tad of a break and when we get back we'll be talking about Kobe Bryant and what did he just win he won another award he won another championship well he did and I'll tell you all about it when we return Check out the show that's built on the MMA. From the UFC to extreme cage fighting, they got the fights covered. Check out the GSMC MMA podcast. Get the latest news on past or upcoming fights. Join us as we talk to and about some of the biggest names in the MMA, past, present, and future. When it's the fight game, there's just one show to check out. GSMCpodcast.com backslash MMA dash podcast. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit G. SMCpodcast.com for more info. Welcome back to the GSMC Basketball Podcast. Just finished up the weekend recap of the games that happened. Now we're going to talk about Kobe Bryant. If you thought we didn't talk about him enough, after even after his retirement, he's still winning stuff. Because he was in the Oscars yesterday and won an award for his animated short, Dear Basketball. Kobe Bryant is now an NBA champion, an NBA MVP, 
multiple first time all team, multiple all star, future Hall of Famer. And now probably going into the All Star game. Again. Which is absolutely remarkable overall, just based on the success that Kobe Bryant has had in the past and how truly talented he is, not just on the court and off the court, but man, seeing what he's capable of doing is truly amazing and without question I'm looking forward to seeing if he wins any more awards. Because he needs a bigger because I think he needs to buy a bigger uh trophy case. Filled with MVPs and finals and all star blacks and so on and so forth. But that's just how that's working. That's how he's been being that dominant because the man never gives up. And never giving up is is remarkable in this in this time in with Kobe Bryant. Even he doesn't even give up when it comes to the Oscars. Like it's the man's the man's a the man's a freak. It's pure and simple. Uh, and with that, uh, we're gonna move on. Once again, congratulations, Kobe, for winning an Oscar. Yeah, Kobe Bryant winning an Oscar. That's just, huh? That's that's something else. Uh, we have a new curse apparently in the world of sports, especially basketball, as the Minnesota Timberwolves have been cursed by Jay Roll. I think I said that wrong, so pardon me if I said the name wrong. I'm not good at these things. Please don't judge. But uh, Ja Rule, I think that's how you pronounce it. I could be totally wrong, though. But regardless, he has given the Timberwolves a curse from the sounds of that. On Twitter, he gave them a curse. I'm trying to find the tweet now. But since everything, everyone tweets, like, oh, here it is. So Ja Rule puts a 30-year title curse on the Wolves. The Timberwolves said... We too were hustled, scammed, bamboozled, hoodwinked, led astray. Uh, I'm not sure entirely what that meant. That's just a Twitter post. Uh, oh, the uh, the rapper who performed at halftime during the Milwaukee Bucks victory over Minnesota on Saturday. Uh, the Timberwolves Twitter account was among those who mocked him with a reference to the Fire Festival. So kind of like just a mockery. It was just like him making they making fun of him. So his response was, "This is Ja Rule's response." And quote, "This is a Twitter quote. You just jinxed yourself to the god this way. You, you're cursed now. Improper use of the word of the of the word your. It's Y O U apostrophe R E. But granted, he used Y O U R. You won't win a championship in the next thirty years. Dot dot dot. And Carl Anthony Towns is leaving. And apologize, and I'll lift the curse." Kiss of death, dot, 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 ellipses. So, that is a harsh penalty. And, well, a harsh curse. The next 30 years, they're going to go without a championship. They already have gone that long without a championship. But I guess they're adding an extra 30 years. And also, Ja Rule is saying he's going to add, Carl Anthony Towns is going to leave Minnesota and all they need to do is apologize to him. I'm assuming he means the Timberwolves uh, Twitter handle, whoever runs that, and uh, say apologize. Or you want the actual GM to say I apologize, which will be even a bolder move. And so I think that a little frustrating uh, if I'm the Timberwolves, like you need any more bad luck than you already have right now. You haven't won a championship. Now you just got a 30-year curse. Who are you, the Lions? Oh, well, fun fact, the Lions actually do win a championship. Oh, forget it. I'm not going to get into it. You can talk, I'll talk about all about that in the sports and football podcast when I have the time to talk about that type of sport. But granted, it all comes down to this point. I feel like everyone is on the Timberwolves kind of disheartened after the loss of Jimmy Butler, and they're still feeling the reeling effects of it. Um... Andrew Wiggins can't really carry a team on his own. Carl Anthony Towns is struggling uh, to handle this on his own. But overall, I think that there is some good talent there that can win games. And with this talent, I will say 30 years without a championship, 
Eh, maybe. I would be hesitant if I'm uh, the Timberwolves fan base and saying, oh, we're going to be cursed and all this stuff and we're never going to win a game, we're not going to win a championship, blah, 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 blah. It's hard not to believe in those things because there's so many other times a uh, thing has happened where they get cursed in one way or jinxed in one way or another, a certain team or something like that. Like, um, for example, I don't know. Uh, I can't really give a good example. I feel embarrassed. Anyways, moving on. So, I wonder if this um, curse will actually happen. Let's see. I'm 23. I got some. I got 30 years left. I could see the outcome of this. Maybe it'll be like the uh, Bobby Lane curse. And those those who don't know that, the Detroit Lions in the 50s were champions. Like they were big time champions in the world of football. And they uh, they traded their best. Uh, they paid, they traded the quarterback. They're they're Tom Brady basically for. I don't even remember who they traded for. But Bobby Lane got so angry, he said they were never going to win for another 50 years. And they never did. After that curse, he said they after he said they won't win for another 50 years, they did not win for another 50 years. No championship, no uh like no chance going to the playoffs or making it in, through in the playoffs for 50 years. And on the 50th anniversary of that curse, which happened in 1958, the Lions went 0 and 16. So yeah, uh, that curse seemed pretty legit, <laughs> all things considered. So if this curse actually happens, he's saying from now, let's just say the 2019 season, so 2019, I will, I will, the, you will never win for another 30 years. They will be winless without a championship until 2049, 2049. That's a long time from now. I would be 50. Let's see. Let's see. That's 30 years from now. I'm 23. I'll be 53 years old. Wow. I'll be old. And that day will never come because I'll never grow old. I have a, like the uh, the show Friends when Joey has a deal with God. Why, God? Why? We had a deal. Let the others grow old. Not me. You know, that kind of thing. That's how I see it. So that happened. The curse uh, I guess it all comes down to their game today against the Kings and seeing if this curse actually might be legit. I'm looking forward to it because who doesn't love a good curse in sports? Because isn't that a great excuse for everything? Like when your team does bad, oh, it's a curse. Oh, it's his, it's a, where's his bad luck charm in the stadium or something of that nature. So that's just how I see that kind of thing going. At least it's just like, you claim that it's a curse, but is it just being bad? Whatever. You know, what are you going to do? You know, if you think about curses in basketball, you think the Kings should have one or something, just based off how many times they've moved before going to Sacramento and not winning since 19, was it 51? Yeah. The longest, well, the Timberwolves have never won a championship at all, so maybe that curse has been around before Ja Rule even said something, but, uh, the Sacramento Kings, the last time they won a championship was when they were the Rochester Royals. Um, and they beat the Knicks in 1951. Is I'm pretty sure the last time that happened. And so that's just, I wouldn't even consider that as a, that would count, you know. Yeah, 1951 was the last time they made it there. So, and it was actually the Knicks' first finals appearance too, ironically enough. So, Fun, fun facts there all around. Uh, anyways, with that, and how um, you think, oh yeah, and if you think anyone else has a curse, the Knicks are sure up there, right? Like, f come on, like their their owner is. How do I say this? Um, a jerk, selfish. Is that? Is that I feel like that's right to say. Uh, and with that, I do see this as one of those factors in where this is going to be like the fans reason why the Timberwolves will be so bad going back to their curse. So we might see in the future, this to be the Jarul ja curse, who knows, but 
Let's just take another short break, one more short break, and when we come back, we'll preview some games that are happening today and uh, see who's going to come out on top. And we'll be right on that when we return. Check out the show built around the women of MMA. From the UFC to the extreme cage fighting, we got the fights covered. Listen. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. The latest news of upcoming fights, discussions of previous matches. Join us as we talk to and about the biggest names in women's mixed martial arts. Past, present, and future. When it's the women's fight game, you know where to listen to. The Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. Welcome back to the GSMC Basketball Podcast, finishing up the day. We're going to preview the games today, the NBA games today. And uh, because we got a huge list, it's Monday after all. These are big-time basketball games because there's no football playing. We'll start off with, well, let's just go right to the Lakers because they're probably the talk like, if this team loses to who they're playing tonight, and that's the Memphis Grizzlies, I believe it's time to hit the panic button because right now, the Western Conference is so tight, you can't afford to lose, especially to teams that are not near the, near the playoffs like the Memphis Grizzlies are at 23 and, tw- and 38. My lord. And uh, with Lonzo Ball still out with his ankle injury, uh, and multiple injuries happening to the Memphis Grizzlies, uh, this is a need, this is a must win game for the Lakers and LeBron James. That's just the bottom line. To hold on to their playoff spot, the Clippers take on the Mavericks to hold on to their slim lead in the playoff spot, playoff race. So uh, I think I have them winning, though. It is in L.A. at the Staples Center. So uh, they do have a definite shot here for sure. And uh, we'll see how that goes. But I have the Clippers winning, and Lakers just need to win that other game. Bucks and Bulls. Ouch. The 45. Their their records are almost completely the opposite. The Bulls are sixteen and forty four, and the Bucks are forty five and fourteen. If you just add a loss and minus a win from the Bulls, they have the same number of wins and losses as the Bucks do. But it's a uh, swip swapped into the bad category, into the loss category mainly. Um, the Seventy Sixers play the Pelicans. They're pretty much set in their playoffs. spot. the Seventy Sixers, they might be able to move up, but I got Seventy Sixers over the Pelicans on this one. It just seemed like that is the better option in general. The Spurs have a test ahead of them. They're looking to hold on to their slim, 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 slim seventh place seating right now. They're tied with the same number of wins and losses as the eighth place Clippers. So loss here would definitely put a factor. If the Clippers win this game, however, if they win their game, then that puts a big, big problem in for the uh, San Antonio Spurs. They are playing a very talented team in the Nets with a uh, new revitalized D'Angelo Russell who's playing the best basketball he's ever played. And the Nets are still looking to get themselves into a comfortable playoff position. So this is not going to be no cakewalk. This ain't your mama's Nets, you know. This is a, this is a, actually a pretty competitive Nets team overall. So honestly, if the Spurs lose this. This is this is they're definitely going to drop out of the like of the seventh seed if the Clippers win. But I guess it all depends on how, if they they need the Mavericks to beat the Clippers to feel more safe. That's just the bottom line there for sure. Uh, Warriors also play. They play the Hornets. Going to be a slaughter probably because it's just that's how the Golden State Warriors play against weak Eastern Conference teams. No disrespect to the Hornets. I just I just feel like the Warriors are just superior in every way possible. Trailblazers look to hold on to their playoff spot against the Cleveland Cavaliers. Another weak uh, playoff, another very weak off- um, Eastern Conference team that's 14 wins, 46 losses for the Cavaliers. Man, losing LeBron hurts a lot more than you realize. And so I see the Trailblazers taking this. I don't really see an issue with that being a problem. But 
The very talented Pacers team facing the trying to hold on to their playoff spot as tight as they can, Detroit Pistons. Even without LA Depot, the Pacers are a top team in the East, and I got them winning this. And last but not least, the Kings are playing the uh, the recently cursed Minnesota Timberwolves. We'll see if their curse actually is alive. They're going to be playing at the Target Center in Minnesota. So it's definitely going to be um, uh, a question of how that's going to go down. Uh, we do not know. Uh, well, we do know that Carl Anthony Towns will be back tonight versus the Kings after his car accident gave him uh, concussion protocols and all that stuff. So he's fresh and ready to go. Uh, and we'll see if this curse is real. This is the beginning of the curse. We'll see how that goes. But uh, that's all we do what we have today. Thank you so much for joining us, everyone. And please tune us in. We're going to do another show, I believe, on Wednesday. So we'll have all this information. We'll have it on Monday as well as Tuesday. Maybe some more news would happen. But as always, I'm Jeff Malinoff, and I'll see you next time. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program